Hi, my name is Evan English from Old English Outfitters. Today we're going to talk about how to read and understand all the numbers on the end of shot shell box. From the time I was about 10 years old, I was spending time in the field with my father. I was also spending time in the store here learning about safety, about the about the technical aspects of firearms. So I kind of grew up in the field, grew up in the store at the same time. One of the things we loved to do together was shoot shotguns, whether it was out in the field hunting birds, hunting game over our dogs, or whether it was clay bird sports, where we were shooting skeet or trap or sporting clays. So as we did that, I had to learn what the right things were and how to choose the right ammo for the task that we were about to do. Uh, those numbers are important that we're about to decipher. One, to choose the safe load for your shotgun, to make sure that you're doing the right thing based on the tolerances of your shotgun. And the second is task-oriented. We want to make sure that we're choosing the right shell to match the task that we're about to do, whether it's a light target load for target sports or whether it's a heavier load for hunting game, we want to make sure we're choosing the right ammo for the task. The first number we're going to look at on any box of shot shells is going to be the gauge. If you look at the gauge here, this is a 12 gauge. The most common gauges are 10 gauge, which would be bigger, and then 20, 28, and 410, which would all be smaller. Easy to remember is that the larger the number, the smaller the gauge, the smaller the number, the larger the gauge. Uh, for the purposes of today, we're going to talk about 12 gauge. It is the most common gauge that we use here in the United States, and chances are that most of you are using a 12 gauge at some point in time or another. 12 gauge needs, this gauge needs to be matched up with your gun barrel. Somewhere on your gun barrel, it should state what gauge your shotgun is. If it's 12 gauge, if it's a 16 gauge, if it's a 20 gauge, if any of these gauges, you need to make sure it matches up with this gauge. The second number that you'll see on the box is the length of the shell. Uh, this is the length of the shell after it has been fired. So as you're looking here at two and three quarter inches, if I were to pull one of these shells out, this part of this box of ammo, Two and three quarter inches would be the measurement after this shell has been fired if you were to measure it empty. Um, comparatively, the longest 12 gauge shot shell would be three and a half inches after it's fired. These are both the same gauge, but very different chamber lengths. You want to make sure that this matches up to your shotgun. If your shotgun has a maximum chamber length of three inches, then you can shoot up to a three inch shell in your shotgun. Um, you don't want to shoot bigger than that. If your chamber length is two and three quarter inches, then this is the maximum length shell that you can shoot in your shotgun safely. Uh, some people have argued that I can put a three inch in my two and three quarter inch chamber, and that is true. It will fit in there, but when you fire it, it will open into the forcing cone and cause extra pressure. So make sure you match that number up. The third number that you see here is the velocity. The velocity that's on this particular box of shells is 1,220 feet per second. So that's going to give you some idea of how fast that it is moving, uh, how fast it's moving its payload, which would be the shot charge, which is the next number. But the velocity also gives you an indicator of, um, of its overall power of the shell. On some boxes, you'll find a dram equivalent. On this particular box of target loads, you'll see a velocity here, but then on this, you'll see the dram equivalent. Dram equivalent is a uh, kind of a throwback to the age of black powder. Um, a dram was one sixteenth of an ounce of black powder, and it gave you an indicator when you looked at a dram equivalent to the amount of power or um, energy that that shell was storing up. Uh, we see it more directly related to the velocity these days um, than we do the overall power, but it is a function of both of these numbers. So that dram equivalent will help you a little bit, uh, but it does not tell you the whole story 
the velocity may tell you. The next number that you find on this box is the payload or the shot charge, the amount of shot that is in the shot shell. These particular ones are one and a quarter ounces. This target load that you see here is an ounce and an eighth. And if you were to take a magnum load in a three and a half inch turkey load, you'll see that that is two ounces. So comparing these three numbers, ounce and a quarter, ounce and an eighth, this is about 10%, uh, 10, 10 to 15% less. However, this is a much longer shell and it's a whole lot more, almost double the target load, um, another 30%, 33% more than a standard field load. Uh, these are important numbers. The higher the higher the shot charge, the more recoil on the backside where you're standing, and also the higher the shot charge, depending on what shot size you're using, but also means more pellets going out the end of the barrel. Um, there's a good balance that has to be found here on shot charge because you want to make sure that you've got enough shot charge to do the job, not too little, not too much. Uh, you don't want to endure a bunch of recoil. This particular load would not be that fun if you were shooting 75 to 100 rounds um, in the dove field one day or shooting at clay birds, whereas a lighter shot charge might be much better for for where you don't need a lot of energy or a lot of shot, and you want to be able to shoot a lot of shots without enduring a bruised shoulder. The last number that you'll see here on the box is the shot size. Shot size is important because it tells you um, the size and somewhat the weight of the shot that you're shooting. As we look at the shot size, this one is, they've given us icons that this is for hunting. It's showing a pheasant, a squirrel, a rabbit. So we know that this is a, they've given us every indicator that this is a hunting load. Uh, but many people don't know what those are. As I'm looking at the uh, this particular display, I can see that it's showing me some, uh, some shot sizes going from triple-lot buckshot all the way around to BB at the six o'clock um, position here, and then wrapping back around up to the number nine shot, back up here at almost 12 o'clock, showing me the smallest shot. Um, most of your target loads are gonna be in this seven and a half, eight, nine shot. Most of your hunting loads for lead shot are gonna be in this six, five, four. Five being a great balance between sixes, which has got a little more shot, and fours, which gives you better penetration. So it's kind of an ideal balance. You'll see most hunting loads in this range. Uh, twos, fours, BBs, those, you don't see a lot of those anymore because of uh, changes in waterfowl hunting, but these used to be very big for waterfowl hunting uh, probably 20 years ago. Um, so if you look at uh, these here, you'll see that those are bigger. These buckshot loads, you'll find those used in um, defense loads or uh, for something to reach out very far. You won't find a lot of these in a shell. So, if, for instance, a double lot buck, you might find nine pellets in a 12 gauge shell, and those are what you would find in a, uh, say, a defense load. Uh, this triple lot, a double lot, they're in the, the 30, 32 caliber range, and um, and then these are much smaller diameter loads. So coming back to reading the box where we started, we've got the shot size, and it's gonna be based on what you're trying to accomplish with that shot shell will determine the shot size that you choose. So in review, coming back, we've got the gauge. Make sure that this matches up with your shotgun. The chamber length, also, make sure that this matches up with your shotgun. These are really important for safety. You don't want to put a 20 gauge in a 12 gauge, uh, 12 gauge chamber. Uh, it might go off. It could cause a very unsafe situation. Um, the chamber length, again, make sure that the two and three quarter inch will work in a three inch, but not vice versa. Make sure that you're shooting the right length shell that is, your gun is suited for it. Choosing the right power is important. You want to make sure that you choose the right velocity, the right power shell to go with your 
go with your task that you're trying to accomplish. So this is a very task-oriented number. Um, also the shot charge, making sure that you've got enough pellets going out the end. Uh, some people like to get more velocity and less shot charge. So these kind of balance one another here. And then the last number, the shot size. Uh, this won't make a difference for any of these others. This only has to do with your intended use. And that's how you choose the shot size. Uh, one of the last things I want to dispel before we, before we stop is the whole idea of high brass, low brass. Uh, the reason for high brass on a shot shell has to do with uh, back in the days where shot shells were made out of paper. And they had to have a higher brass on them in a higher power shell to make sure that the black powder didn't burn through the paper, uh, causing the shell to separate inside the gun. Um, today we do it still, put the higher brass or the higher collar on the, on the higher power shells as a visual indicator and as a uh, helpful note for those choosing the loads. Uh, lower power would be lower brass or lower collar. Um, again, not necessary to limit burn throughs but still important as a visual indicator and helpful to let you know which one to choose for what task. Well, that's about it for today. I want to thank you for joining us and for watching this video. Uh, if you liked what you saw, leave us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And come back and see us this time next week.